at 43, I had a question coming out of the chapter seven deep dive number four. And here we were asked to look at Trump's national approval rating and compare that to what we're seeing in California. And I update these numbers every six months or so. So this was the latest one I did. Um, I got it in February of 2020. And in the years I've been doing this, and I've done it ever since he was elected, um, his approval rating in general across the U.S. has actually gone up a bit. And for a little while, it was going up in California. It was still much lower than the national average. But when I clocked in um, in February, it was much lower. I think last time around when I had gotten this data, it was somewhere around 36%. So it really did take a dive in the last six months um, since I've looked at the problem. Okay, so at any rate, let's start unpacking this. So we've got a sample here, right? A random sample. And as soon as I see I've got a sample, I really start to think, okay, I'm, I'm probably on one of the two sampling distributions. And when I say one of the two sampling distributions, I mean, I'm either looking at means or I'm looking at proportions. And this all boils down to, did I have a numerical variable? Or did I have a categorical variable? And I've kind of been trying to beat into our heads since day one that the first thing you need to do with any of these problems is figure out what's varying. Right? If you can't figure out what the variable is, what you're measuring or what you're counting, um, you're going to run into some problems. So if I take a look at this, if I was one of these 1,707 people, they're going to ask me, hey, do you approve of President Trump or not? That's what's varying. So my variable here is whether or not I, I could even say I have a favorable opinion of President Trump. So if that's my variable, then let me go to my flow chart and try and work this and see where I wind up. So I've read my variable, or I've read my problem. I've discovered my variable. It's categorical. I do have a sample, so there's a good chance I'm going to be on this sampling distribution for proportions. And if I take a look at the numbers that were given to me in here, I see a bunch of proportions, right? You keep seeing 43 and 31 repeated. So when you're seeing proportions, that's a pretty good indication that you're in proportion land of some kind. So let's take a look at the rules for proportion land, right? They're up here. And we're going to play these out. So the first thing I need to figure out is which of those numbers is my statistic and which one is my parameter. Because whatever my parameter is, right, whatever the, the true proportion is, that's the one I want to set my distribution around. So let's go figure that out. Now, as I scroll back down here, all right, I basically have two stats or two numbers, right? So I have 31% and 43%. And one of these is the parameter and one of these is the statistic. And basically, when you come to these proportion problems, you want to find the parameter first. We'll leave the statistic till later on. So if we look for the parameter, all right, let me erase all of my little markings here. What we want to see is what was the true proportion, or what are we assuming the true proportion of um, California voters? What is that true proportion of the, the favorability for President Trump? So if I look at this, all right, if I look at these numbers, if I look at 31% specifically, I'm seeing that it came from my sample, right? It said a random sample of 1,707 adults gave me this number. And since 31%, oops, not open in Safari, since 31% came from a sample, that's a pretty good indicator that 31% is actually my statistic. All right, and then we see this phrase here, true proportion in California was 43%, right? We're going to assume that California has the same favorability rating right now as the U.S. So where I'm going with this is my parameter is 43%, all right? And my statistic, if I want to color code it a little bit differently, my statistic is 31%. And really, if I want to keep consistent, then let me erase the, the red on here. And let's get this to a yellow because this is the information telling us that we had the statistic, the set, the sample being referenced, right? And here we see true proportion. Oops, let me color code that again. And that's the information in red that's coming out. 
All right, so let me go ahead. I'm gonna erase all of the different markings so that it's not too junked up here. And we're gonna keep track of this stuff. All right, so I'm gonna write this out as for right now, the number I care about is we're gonna assume the true proportion of favorability uh, in California for the president is 43%. And now if we take a look at the formulas, and I'll erase all of this too. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that 43% here here and here, and I'm gonna then use that proportion to determine if I can put, if I pass all three of those assumptions and I can put the N there. So let's go build the sampling distribution. All right, here we go. Okay, so I wanna say, is my sampling distribution, I wanna see, is it normally distributed? Where is its center? What's its standard error? Okay, so the rules say whatever the true proportion is, drop it into the center. So I'm gonna put 0.43 here. Now to calculate the standard error, all right, if I wanna do the standard error, I need to look at the formula square root P one minus P over N. So in this case, that's gonna be the square root of 0.43, one minus 0.43. And my sample size here was 1707. So let's go find what the standard error is on my calculator. So I'm gonna do 0.43 times its complement one minus 0.43, divide that by our sample size, and let me square root that number. And I, Oops, this calculator always likes to give them to me in fractions. So it looks like it's about 0 0.012 if I'm if I'm gonna round. So my let me go write that my standard error is about, oops, excuse me, 0 0.012. Okay, so in this position, I'm gonna have 0 0.012. And then the big question comes, hey, do I have normality? So let, let's go through our assumptions. The first thing we have to check is that I have at least 10 successes. And if you're wondering where I'm getting that from, it's right here. NP has to be greater than or equal to 10 for the central limit theorem to apply in proportion land. All right, and it, it has nothing to do with N being greater than or equal to 30. That's solely for mean land. All right, so let's, let's crunch this. Let's see what we got. My N was, what, 1,707? My true proportion was 43%. Let's see what that number is. So 1707 times 0.43 gives me 734.01. Or really it's saying 734 folks said yes, or said they approved of Donald Trump. Okay, so we have 734.01. That is greater than or equal to 10. I'm through the first assumption. The next thing I need to check is that N times 1 minus P is also greater than or equal to 10. So we have 1707 times 1 minus 0.43. Let's see what that gets us. Oops, oh, wrong thing. Ah, here we go, 1707 times one minus 0.43. It looks like 972.99. Oops, all right, 972.99. That is also greater than or equal to 10. And just before we move on, I wanna point out these two numbers, if you were to add up 734, and 972.99, they would total out to your sample size of 1707. And they should, because what this is saying that is that we have at least 10, and I'll put in this in, case, in quotes, successes. So that means if you took a survey of these 1707 folks, you expect about 734 to say that they approve of Donald Trump, or President Trump. And if you um, survey, again, these 1707 folks, you would also expect then that about 973 people would say, no, they don't approve of President Trump. And that could vary a little bit, but that's where we're expecting things to fall. So we know we'll have at least 10 successes. And then on this, this end, we have at least 10 failures. We have a lot more than that. Our sample size is pretty large. So the next thing we need to check is that our sample size is small relative to our population. And that's my own acronym, all right? Again, I said, if you try and tell this to a different stats teacher, they're gonna think you're nuts. All right, so sample size, small, relative to population. So SSS, RTP, and we have this cutoff of 10%. So let's go back to this, let me zoom this back out and head back down here and let's check. And the formula is always 10 times the sample size. So if I do 10N, this is gonna be 10 times, and our sample size was what, 1707? So that would wind up being 1700, or 17,000, excuse me, and 70 people, or in this case, adults in California. Oops, sorry, sorry, let me scroll back down there. 
adults in California. And it's a safe bet that there are at least 17,070 adults in California. There's probably closer to like 20 million of us. So what that's saying is if there's really about 20 million adults, and I, I'm not completely making this up. Our last census said there were around 40 million folks in the U.S. So about half of them are probably adults at this point. So if there's about, and I'm going to put approximate because I don't know the current census data. If there's around 20 million Right? and you're only grabbing 1,707 of those folks, your sample size is small, relatively speaking, to your population. It's much less than 10%, so we can go ahead and sample without replacement. All right, And the cool thing is I've checked through all of those, so I get to put capital N on my sampling distribution, which means if I want to go make a graph, and I can... All right, let's go make this graph, right? So we could go ahead and we could say P prime here, right? So proportion of CA adults who approve of the prez. All right, and I would put 0.43 here. And you can go, if you want, three up, right, and three back. That's typically what I do. You don't have to. Um, I'm going to try and mental math this. If I added um, point, oh, you know what I just realized? I think I wrote 0. 0.12 here and I wanted 0. 0.012. Sorry, guys. Let me go ahead and fix that. All right. So let's add some 0. 0.012s. So if I take 0. 0.43 and I add 0. 0.012, I'm looking at 0. 0.442. Let me add another 0. 0.012. And we are at 0.454. Oh, this is going to get really crunched in there. Um, let's see if I can add one more just for fun. And it's 0.466. All right, and now let me head the other way. And so let's do 0.43 minus 0.012. So 0.418. All right, And I swear I'm getting there. All right, and then we're going to subtract another 0 0.012. We're at 0 0.406. And last but not least, 0 0.394. All right, technically, if we wanted to write a y-axis, we could, and it would always have probability along the y. And so there's my best guess, not my best guess, my best sketch of my um, sampling distribution. All right. Now let's get back to the problem, right? We've set up everything, but let's actually answer this question. And here we go, right? If we look at this, it says, hey, what's the probability of getting a rating of 31% or less if the true proportion is actually up at 43%? So I want capital P. I want what's the sample the probability that the sample proportion is 31% or less. Okay, so now 31%, wow, that would be much farther I'd have to extend this axis, right? Because really, whoa, that is one of the worst lines. Will it catch it? There we go. I'm at, if if I zoom in and know it's hard to see, this was 39.4 right here. I'd have to go way down to get to like 31%, right? It is way down that P prime axis. And you can imagine there's almost no area under that curve at that point, but I can still crunch this. So I'm going to go normal CDF. And I get to say normal CDF because I have the capital N there. So I'm going to do negative 1899.31. And if you're wondering why the negative, um, let me flip this back. Because if I wanted to go less than 31, I actually have to go that way down to negative infinity. Okay. And then our mean was 43%. And our standard error was 0.012. So let me go crunch this. So I'm going to do second VARs, normal CDF. We're going to go negative 1, E99. And then I'm going to go 0 0.31, 0 0.43, 0 0.012. And I am expecting a zero. Not quite a zero, but um, 23 zeros and then a seven. I'm going to round that to zero, real safe on rounding that to zero. So this probability is zero. All right. And so what we're saying, what we're trying to say here is that if the true proportion of Californians who favored Donald Trump's uh, or favored the, had a favorable opinion of the presidency, if it was really the same as the U.S., right? So if our state had the same view of the president as the U.S., then what's the likelihood 
that a sample proportion would be this far off, would be this low, it would never happen. And what this is telling us is that Californians have a different opinion of the president than the rest of the nation, right? So let me put, therefore, Californians have a different opinion and I would actually argue it's a lower opinion, different opinion of the president than the rest of the country. Because I'll say this one more time. This is like the ultimate conditional probability. If we start this under the assumption that if California felt the same as the nation, right? So if this was true, right? Conditional phrasing, if. If it's true, then the likelihood you see this kind of sample data just through chance, just through the fact that something has to happen when you run a survey, this would never happen if this is true. And that means that, hey, then this 43% for California is not true. We feel differently about the president than the rest of the nation. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.